My name is Mr. Taylor and I am a natural science specialist here at Roper Mountain Science Center and we are in our ecology lab and ecology is the study of ecosystems. And in this lab, we have ecosystems on display here in South Carolina from the mountains to the sea. Now an ecosystem is an area where the living parts, the organisms called the biotic parts, interact or relate with the non-living, the abiotic parts. And did you know that the abiotic parts determine what lives there? So we're gonna take a close look at uh, couple of ecosystems here we have. Uh, these trout depend upon cold water habitats. They need cold water. That cold water needs to be between 50 to 60 degrees for them to be able to survive. Now they also need lots of oxygen in the water which is called dissolved oxygen and you find more dissolved oxygen in cold water habitats and fast flowing habitats. Of course they have gills so they need to breathe and get that oxygen from the water. And they also need rocky bottoms or gravel bottoms uh, to uh, survive. Now that we know a little bit about the trout and they can only really survive in that type of, with those abiotic factors. Let's take a look over here at the, at the beaver pond with these red ear pond sliders. I'm going to grab one. Now these red eared pond turtle sliders, they need warm water of a pond ecosystem. In fact, they can't really hardly move at all and survive if it's less than 65 degrees Fahrenheit. They like it warm, like around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And they need sunny areas. They can't survive in the shade like the trout. They need sunny areas to bask out on a log to warm up. Now they also need, and they can survive in still waters. They would not like the fast flowing cold waters. Uh, and they like their bottoms to have, the bottoms of ponds to be muddy with lots of vegetation for them to be able to survive and find their food. So the red-eared sliders can't survive in fast flowing cold waters and the trout we talked about can't survive in warm still pond water. Just some examples of how the abiotic factors, the sunlight, the water, the temperature, the soil, uh, affect and determines what lives there. So the next time you visit a pond or a stream or a forest, think about the animals that live there. You might even want to make a journal of what you see there and what they depend upon uh, there to survive. Thanks for visiting the Ecology Lab.